Assalamualaikum class. Waalaikum assalam. Yes. So we'll start our lecture, our today's lecture number one, about IT and society. It is information technology and society. Now, what do you think uh, it's meant by IT and society? Yes, ma'am. Like daily use of IT in our life. Yes. Good. In our society. The impact or the use of information technology in today's life in this era. So our lecture content is analyze significant developments in IT in the last 50 years. How IT has changed society over the last 50 years and explain how IT has changed the way people work in the last 50 years. And in the end, we will explain the impact of individuals of living in the information age. For the people who are living in this information age, we will discuss the impact of an IT on their lives. So now we will start that how has technology changed in the last 50 years? The 60s were a period of a great social change. In 50s, there was no IT, no invention of IT developments. And after the 50s, the 60s, was the period when this social change occurred. Now, the advance in communication technologies and the space race in the decade produced that lifestyles were changing. Now, when there was a technology introduced, we observed that the life was certainly changing. How life was changing? Life was changing that many things are replaced by new things. Many old uh, technologies, you can say, or the old machineries were replaced by new machineries. Now, these are some old products like this TV or white mouse or this bulb, tape, CD, calculator. These all were replaced. So you can say these all items have been updated according to that new era. Now, important invention of 60s. What was the important invention of 60s? It was a space war, the first computer video game invented. But that was the first video game that was invented in 60s. The ARPANET first internet was invented. Now, without internet, we couldn't have been made this far because we have to start from somewhere. ARPANET was the first internet that was invented in 60s. Now the evolution of technology, how the technology has started. The changes in technology over the last 50 years have been amazing. For example, TV went colored. Now previous 60s, we can, um, I don't know you imagine or not, but the TVs were black and white. So the TV went colored. The colors was invented. Phones went mobiles, computers shrank from needing an air-conditioned room to the laptops. We have today guitars went electric, pianos become electric keyboards, posts become email, cars have changed so much, better banking and economical engines, better safety and better entertainment systems. Microwaves appeared for cooking, etc. Nowadays, society is very different and this is because of the changing in technology. Now, these all technology were updated for good. New inventions were made to which our uh, daily use things were updated and were more attracted to make it more easy to use and more attractive and for the safety and for our entertainment. In every part of our life, you can say the IT has uh, updated the IT has entered through which our today's living is really easy. Now, we are now living in a modern society. That's great for the lazy person, we could say. Our cars are so advanced that they pretty much drive themselves. And even the devices in our kitchen can prepare from super with minimal input from our side. Nowadays, there are a lot of technological things that 50 years ago did not exist. For example, robots. Now, first, just uh, start thinking with our homes. The floor kneading machine is now in, uh, it was invented after 60s. Before that, people use that round thing and they find their um, seed at their home. They made floor at their home by their own strength. Now machine was replaced by that uh, 
small self operating thing that now people doesn't need to use that strength to make it flow that was the main basic thing then there were now there are robots there are artificial hearts artificial livers including other organs fuel cell bikes self cleaning windows iphone ipods digital cameras virtual keyboards phone tooth optical camo camouflage system now what is ocs or uh, optical camouflage systems that can disappear or that is a screen um, in which a people you may say the it adjust themselves according to the environment that is a sheet an electronic sheet or digital sheet uh, which reflects all of the environment and it can disappear a person if a person is standing behind that sheet it will just look like the other uh, environment that is a ocs hybrid cars there are ice bikes social network like facebook twitter myspace etc smartphones washing machine electric toothbrushes automated gates and garage doors technology is a fast growing industry as of right now it has no signs of slowing down anytime soon in fact every thing will be run by technology in the near future now if we see um, or if we ask our grandparents or grand grandparents if they are present so they would say that the life they have spent was much more difficult and they were much more active that's why their health were very good till now i would rather say that because because of the it the people have become really lazy half of their work half of their strength work is done by the machines the people from 50s they used to walk a lot a lot from one place to another place but today we use our motor bikes we use cars we can't even walk from uh, even one or two miles we don't prefer walking and the walk makes your health strong your inner core uh, i would say your uh, immune system strong but that has less now there are artificial hearts artificial liver including other organs before in 50s there were no such type of uh, inventions in medical history now there are so much machinery there are so much uh, of uh, you can say technology who can detect every you who can see your every organ who can detect issues in your any part of your body as well as in our today's life the it has advanced a lot in the 70s now that was all the things that were in 60s now what the 70 in the 70s social practices continue to be influenced by new technological advances now after the 60s when uh, the it was invented or uh, these technologies were invented many people see that now everything has been started everything was replaced every person was replacing by a computer or by a machine and that was the era when this technology has started and there was nowhere end because some of the people become really at ease by using those machines so in the 70s social practice continued to be influenced by new technological advances now after the success of 60s in 70s that practice continued and there was now the floppy disk the dot matrix printer the daisy wheel printer the food processor first internet connection is documented it was not invented it was it was documented and the ethernet local computer network now these were the things that were introduced in the 70s after the success of 60s now do you know what is dot matrix printer uh, yes ma'am which uh, usually uses a uh, ribboning re what does it uses sorry a ribboning it has a ribbon and it uh, like it makes a sound like choo 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 something like that yes no uh, yes it really makes a sound but a dot matrix means the whatever button you have pressed there is an injector who print that button dot by dot uh, the words are written in dotted form that we look uh, totally look like printed but there are very small dots uh, for example if we press a the 
printer will press A, but in a dotted form. That was a dot matrix. And then there was a daisy wheel print, uh, printer. That printer prints in a wheel. There were wheels in which there was written, uh, written A from Z, uh, 0 to 10, uh, 9, sorry. So the every time we press a button, that wheel rounds and print that button. That, that, was, that is like a stamp, daisy wheel. You get it now? Did you get it? Umam and Rania and yes, those. Okay, if you don't understand anything, you three of you, so please uh, stop me right there so I could explain more. Okay, because these are the very basic things I think you should know. Uh, so, but if you don't know anything, please let me know so I can brief in it. Uh, okay, after the 70s, in the 70s, social practice continued to be influenced by new technological advances. Now, in 70s, something were more invented. It was not just limited to these things. After the success of these things, they have worked more. Because if we are successful in something, we doesn't stop there. We wanted to make it more easier, more smoother, more updated, more good. So the disposable lighter, the liposuction, because before that there was no sign of liposuction or such instrument that can do a liposuction or who can provide the persons that ease. Then there was the laser printer. After the dot matrix and uh, daisy wheel, there was a laser printer who uses the laser light to print and uh, to scan and print each and every word. And then there was the inkjet printer in which we inject the ink so it could print whatever we want. Then Microsoft was founded. It was all the first all color TV season and the first portable computer. Later in 70s, these things were invented. Then we will come into 80s. The 80s were a really important decade because it signals the start of a computer age and many of the most popular consumer products still around today were invented in the 80s, for example. Now, most of the 80s things were uh, are still using now. They're still using it now because it is uh, like more reliable and more good. So the hepatitis B vaccine that was started in 80s and it is still going. The scanning tunneling microscope. We are still using many of the people are still using the scanning tunneling microscope. The soft biofocal contact lenses. Now, does anyone know about soft biofocal contact lenses? What are biofocal contact lenses? Does anyone know? Can you please repeat the question again? I couldn't hear you clearly. I'm asking what is soft biofocal lenses, contact lenses? What does it mean? Means these basically are used in projectile, the projectile lenses? No, these are the normal lenses that are being used uh, today. Biofocal contact lenses are lenses designed to address the focusing issues associated with Prisophobia and incorporating different prescriptions. In easy word, the people who uh, whose eyesight are weak and they need a focus, and they prefer lenses except uh, the glasses. The normal lenses the people use for eyesight or focusing on something are called soft biofocal contact lenses. Okay. And then the birth of IBM PC signaled the start of personal computers first in the offices and then into people's home, becoming an integral part of our lives. Now, uh, we all know the generations of computer. Then the computer was so expensive that very, very minimal business or organization have that system. But not each and every person had it then. Then they signaled the start of a personal computers for each and every office person and the people's home, at home. The desktops were discovered. They were invented because it, it becomes an integral part of our lives. Then the MS-DOS, Microsoft Disk Operating System, and the Windows program started. CD-ROM was invented. The Apple Lisa and the Apple Macintosh, both computer designed by Apple. They have uh, discovered. The currently familiar disposable camera, 
that was also invented the first 3d video game 3d video game was also invented in the 80s that was robot the digital cellular phones ig cell phones the first that and that button cell phones we can we would say that have an antenna there were so old phones that were discovered uh, invented in the 80s the digital cellular phones with ig there was no internet in them you can just attend the call uh, there were uh, i think there were no text message also included in digital cellular phones am i right yes ma'am okay and then it comes the compute okay i have skipped one the 90s after the 80s there was 90s was the era of fax modern emails the new online world dazzling multimedia games and educational software innovations that changed the way people interacted with each other on an international scale inventions in the 1990s would include now what does 1990 include it include the world wide web the internet protocol and a www language html created by tim berners lee it means the start of today's network the network we are using now until now that was started in 90s we could search each and everything we can contact here, everywhere that was started in 90s the first version of internet explorer is released the java computer language the java computer language was also invented in 90s the dvd came the web tv came new windows operating system were inventing the mp3 player the gas powered fuel cell was invented introduction of 2g cell phones including text messages and some other applications that ig cell phones didn't have ig cell phones were just used for attend and end the call but introduction of 2g cell phones it makes user to enter the text messages they could send text messages they could receive text messages and there were some other features that ig cell phones don't have the genetic engineering as well as cloning stem cell research now what do you mean by genetic engineering do you know that now for those you have to answer do you know what is genetic engineering for those what is genetic engineering no and rania what is genetic engineering okay umam do you know what is genetic engineering yes ma'am basically it's a biological term yes. which is used for uh... Make, making uh, like modifying genes making antibiotics and stuff like those yes really good okay using these developed different things modifying it yes to work on genes is genetic engineering basically the all operation better you were too slow so please make it fast next time to work on genes as well as cloning now cloning means to make a copy for example there is a flower we have used that genes to make exactly same flower that is cloning a real copy of anything and stem cell is to take a special cell a main cell from genetics from your genes and make something else to invent something else then the smart pills the beepers that also was included in 90s now computers and society computer is an integral part of society nowadays and it's impossible to deny the importance in our daily life if it is said that computers are oxygen for the business it wouldn't be refused but now i would say no, computers or laptops or internet have been become oxygen for each and every person because from kids to elders everyone is obsessed with social sites or internet that they just want internet to be on their phone all the time even if they are not doing any work for it but they just need it it has become an oxygen it would not be refused the impact of computers is divided into five components political economic cultural social and moral so now what does it mean by uh, the impact of computers in political because in political issues or political sites computers are being used uh, either it is for um, creating some pamphlets or creating some uh, statements about anything 
or so for posting anything economically it is used because we can see the rates we can see the stocks going up or going down there are many cultural informations of, on computer we can search for any culture and get knowledge about anything on uh, about culture you know uh, on computers socially we have become really social and more and for ourselves also we use it for personal satisfaction we use it for personal use moral values like we have started businesses we have started uh, many women have started home businesses from computer because they cannot go out so they are divided into five components then what is what is digital citizenship rania you have to answer now what is digital citizenship do you know that like the identity on an identity of, of a person digital citizenship is a person using information technology in order to engage in society to be in uh, you can say to be a part of this society yes uh, rani you all and how we use interact with people yes good digital citizenship is a people for example you are using a digital platform and you are using it so you are a digital citizen because you are using a social site in which you can interact with many people unlimited people in order do you know them or you don't know them to be engaged with something it can be engaged in the society engaged in politics and government according to digital citizenship digital citizenship is how we should act when we are using digital tools interacting with others online and what should be taught to help the next generation be better stewards of this technology now it's not hidden that social sites are not safe uh, there are many issues running like bullying we harass uh, there are many fake comments fake in uh, fake news is many many fake websites there are many more you know uh, negative sides of uh, being a digital person so as according to a digital citizen we have to follow the rules we have to set the rules so we can help the next generation be better by using these technologies and how could you protect yourself and others now what is digital citizenship all good digital citizens should respect themselves and others you should not harm anyone by your comments for example we will take an example of a facebook uh, or a twitter if there is any picture uh, and uh, someone has uploaded don't criticize them like you don't want to be criticized think for as you you if you post something you don't want anyone to uh, leave a bad comment so respect others also like that stand up to cyber bullying when they see it happening if you see any cyber bullying happening on some side then stand up for that there are especially sites where you can report you can block that person you can report to that person respect copyright and intellectual property when there is a copyright issue you should respect them don't use uh, uh, what is that word uh, the cyber security issues that don't don't you uh, use that that is not allowed you to use now that is a specific word for that for stealing for example the uh, stealing music and uh, stealing some others work basically carefully manage their digital footprints if someone is working so good try to focus on that that how is this person is so good on digital why everyone is respecting him or her what is its aims how is he is being so careful on digital balance the time they spend online and using media then uh, that is for um, for today's generation also even small kids when they use internet when they are on internet they doesn't seem like ending it they just want it then when we wake up we should have cell phone and we should have internet and when they sleep the phone is also always in their hands so but you have to balance the time that you have to maintain when you are spending time online you have to know you should know that when to stop stay safe online be aware of cyber bullying uh, so no one can steal your personal data 
and uh, no one can threaten you protect private information for themselves and other protect your personal private information as well as for others that's why each and every social sites have private and uh, public security systems that what you wanted people to know and what you don't want people to know what is your private place or is there a lim limited person who can see your data that like friends and everyone the nine elements of digital citizenship your students uh, need to know digital access what is digital access okay rania what is digital access being able to access particular sites account and being in digital yes good rania uh, is it was rania or yes rania digital access is the ability to connect to the internet through a computer or a mobile device when you connect to digital world when you connect to internet so you are accessing that digital thing so that is digital access and who knows who is uh, what is digital commerce who will tell me what is digital commerce yes the online business platform commerce mean when we buy or we sell something online digital commerce is a process of buying things online without human intervention in intervention when when we direct inter uh, interact with computer or their website digitally and we sell or so we buy something that is digital commerce with, without the interaction without the in um, interrupting of any human that is digital commerce what is digital communication this is the social media we use yes when we interact with people when we connect through social media through email through messaging through texting with someone that is digital communication then there is digital literacy literacy means to uh, know the knowledge of being digital how you can use that technology digital etiquette to use uh, to uh, are you following the rules and regulations of being digital or, or of being social so no one could uh, be harmed by you or by your words how you are using internet there are basic uh, etiquettes of each and everything for example there are etiquettes of going to school there are etiquettes of going to college there are etiquettes of being in the professional life as well <coughs> sorry there are etiquettes of being digital also what rules you have to follow and what you should avoid then there is digital law digital law is same as digital etiquettes uh, or they are basic for example when you um, interact with any websites or uh, digital law is basically defined as electronic responsibility for actions and deeds what are you doing your actions on that electronic or your devices in other words digital law refers to what are uh, what you are and you what you, uh, you are not allowed to use on the internet there are many sites that are banned you can say um, in pakistan but still some people use vpn to open those websites or use those services that is against digital law then digital rights and responsibilities what are your rights what are the other person's rights and responsibilities towards other people means you um, is uh, do you consider the stalking as your digital right or not no it's against the law so that is against that is not your right so you shouldn't be used that now that is your responsibility responsibility to uh, think about it that you cannot stalk any person because that is against the right and digital health and wellness how did the digital health and wellness is included in digital citizenship what do you think Umam, you tell me. Means a uh, term digital rights and responsibilities, right? Or the digital health. Digital health and wellness. So basically, it's used in the medication field, the technology that help us cure our disease, which back then in the times, what there were no cures for those. uh this can be but uh, it's not like that digital health and wellness means when you are using social websites you now there are many people who get addicted to that thing socially or uh, they praises uh, each and every person for example if there is any vlogger he is spending or she is spending a good life 
but that is what you see and then people started like i don't have good life they criticize themselves they go into complex and that affect your health and wellness right seeing other persons doing well on internet and you spend all the time by just seeing them oh wow how they are spending their lives they are very good in their lives they are traveling here and there they have no tension in their lives and you start criticizing your life and that will affect your health right that is called digital health and wellness you should be aware and you should have a uh, focus on your life so nothing can affect your life and your health now do you understand what is digital health and wellness yes ma'am good now community and the age uh, information age gender culture how does society benefit from information age now it can improve relationships at home work and in social situation by deepening your connections to other and improving teamwork decision making caring and problem solving it enables you to communicate even negative or difficult messages without creating conflict or destroying trust now socially it has benefit our each information age uh, because it has improved relationships at home at work in social situation when we interact some with some people we get their suggestions we uh, tell each and everything because before that they were letters now what happened today must not be written it in, in letter in very briefly way because there was so much to tell so the people use only very important lines to tell them and after many days the other person receives that letter but now what is that now each and everything that is happening is just one text away with your friends and family you can tell each and everything you can be in connect uh, in connection with your family at every time if you are far away if you are working if there is some problem in your house and you are working in your office so you can just get an email you can just get an whatsapp message so it can improve your relationship at home and with work if someone is not feeling well and he cannot go to office but he can work from home so the work is not disrupted so there is a good relationship between all of the clients and uh, the employees that even though person is not there there is not present but he is also working uh, the company will not be in the loss for um, if some person is not there no okay so okay what is improving teamwork teamwork is like uh, when we are working we collaborate with each of our team members if we are having any trouble and then they gives us solution and if we are not making any decision there is some issue making uh, with the decision making we can take um, information or advice from each and every person just it's one text away so it solves each and every problem it solves relationship it improves relationship it builds trust and even a negative difficult difficult, uh, difficult messages without creating conflict or destroying trust although it is not very easy if uh, we see about uh, whatsapp now like our parents who cannot type text messages my parents cannot type me text messages but now what is their benefit if they want to say or, or they want to tell us uh, anything if they don't have balance in their cell phones they just send a voice text mail whatever they want to say so it has been resolves each generations issues then there is role of age what is the role of age in in information age in the rapidly aging pro, uh, population the elderly are called upon to adapt new technology and the demands of modern society obviously uh, everyone has to work with the community or with the generations all the new inventions when you are living in uh, 19 uh, 90s era or 20s era you have to work through it with each and every person you have to make yourself able to be in that society that you know everything you know how to uh, write message or how to convey message uh, through using a social sites so it is widely accepted that elders individually show a low adjustment to the advent of new technologies compared to your younger generation either because they do not have the technological experience or because of their current health status now many people of our 
I would say uh, parents' age also, or our grandparents' age. Many people are there who has adopted these technologies because of some of the issues that, uh, for example, they have started using WhatsApp because their children are not always available, so they could leave a message for them by using a voice note. Or if they are working in an organization, uh, they have to go uh, learn about computer, about uh, each and every technology that can be eased that can be eased their work so some are adapting these technologies due to their work due to the issues but those people who don't have any any sort of issues they think that uh, there is no need to understand technology because we don't have to use it for example computer they are sitting in, in their homes. Uh, they do not learn to operate computer because they don't need it. They said, no, we don't want to because we don't need it. There's no need. They, they could not benefit us. It will just take time, waste our time. So they will not. So that is the role of aid, that some people who need it, they just understand, they just learn what they need. Other than that, they are not interested because it would not benefit them. But for us or for our children, it has been become that, no, we have to walk with this era. We have to stand up. We have to know each and everything. What if our community or our, or our society or even your surroundings ask anything about any technology? And what if you don't know? They feel it shame. So they need to be prepared for each and every questions. That is for younger generations. They have to adjust in each and every situation. Furthermore, at their effect to use new technologies, they usually face many difficulties driving from demographic characteristics such as income education, geographical location, possible disabilities, as well as difficulties related to complexity of new technology. Other contributing factors for this low adjustment of, uh, to new technologies are the lack of incentives, economical obstacles, digital skills, and appropriate training. Now, just give me an example that how new technology and geographical location is interacted. Give me an example. What sort of difficulties they would face as a demographic uh, or um, geographical location? Sorry. Anyone? No one is answering. Why? Okay, I will give you an example. For example, you are addicted to mobile and internet. And now there is an issue that you have to go to your village where there is no internet access or low internet access. So there is a geographical location change. There you can face difficulties. While you are living in cities, you are working in your offices, you cannot go to those areas. You miss the opportunities to visit those areas because anything, any work can come up and you have to be online. You have to reply them on time. That is geographical location difficulties. You may feel difficulties. You may face difficulties when you are using new technologies at geographical location. Now, do you understand that? Good. And class, if you don't know anything, just tell me you don't know. Don't make me wait for that. So now demographic characteristics also include income issues. Sometimes there are some uh, in, uh, internet issues through which your income may be, uh, your pay is not debited in your accounts. Or sometimes when you send money, the other person didn't receive that. Or some technical, due to some technical issue, the status has not been updated. These also difficulties occurs in education. And, uh, well, nowadays, you can see that when there was a pandemic, uh, COVID issues, the education was uh, badly, I would say, uh, there was a gap. Education was badly, um, what is that word? The education was stopped for time of being, I would say. There was really issues for those people, for example, if some people are uh, really poor, they are just um, very problematically arrange the fees of education. They don't have cell phones. They don't have internet connections. 
that strong that a person can be uh, taken online classes at that issue education was uh, education was really disturbed for that persons or for that people it makes disturbing issues in that their homes also they have to buy then the cell phones and they have to pay for internet connection so that their child could be uh, educating uh, his education didn't disturb so that was an education issues also for many of the people uh, according to new technologies so other contributing factors for this low adjustment to new technologies are the lack of incentives economic economical obstacles digital skills and appropriate training those people who doesn't know how to operate uh, cell phones for example if we talked about government technologies or government school teachers who are really old uh, or, or the head it was so difficult if they don't know about these softwares like zoom or google classes so they have to learn about these new technologies because they have to stand up and they have to pass with them now what is the role of gender the first point is female getting more opportunities to work how the females are getting more opportunities to work with the new technologies hurry up answer they can work from home yes the main benefit for women for that they, they can work from home uh, it was before covid pandemic also but nowadays if we see that we can see in covid many women start working from their home and they are successful for example the, the restaurants were closed the women started uh, home cooking and start delivering or pick and order Uh, or uh, they have started their boutiques at home. They have started the stitching at home through online. Online websites are available for ladies to work, sell, and buy. Independent community has been created, and distant learning programs. Many people started online uh, teaching, like me also. I have started in that era and uh, the distant learning programs. That I was afraid of going out because of my kids. so but i have to do something i have to connect it with this educational air system i uh, i can't keep a gap on that so i started online teaching and that is the best thing for me i can care for my kids as well as i can teach so it really helps me a lot next is role of technology in culture what is the role of technology in culture technology influences everyday life and has a strong influence on culture technology is incorporated in all aspects of culture including travel food government and art technology shapes different cultures and differentiates one from another how what is the role of technology in culture technology influences everyday life now technology how it covers everyday life the vlogging people have started vlogging and tell them about their personal life their professional life how they have started they have experiences they have shared the experience of their businesses that how they have started earning sitting at home how they have started with very low um, investment people has known about each and every culture through this technology the uh, every aspects of culture they have used including traveling they have uh, they uh, know about each and every traveling spot through technologies because if there was no technology each person couldn't share their experiences when they travel uh, there is every feels about food there is variety of food videos or you can say vlogs about that how they are making food how they have started their work uh, of food delivering at home with low investment or with zero investment you can say they have shared the videos of their cooking and their earning and the government and the art now in the technology there are variety of uh, i would say variety of uh, ways of people to earn to share their experiences intermixing communicate communities now there uh, how it is intermixing communities a people who work on technology and a people who work uh, in real life for example there is a restaurant they don't use website or they don't make their videos but what do vloggers do vloggers go to the restaurants vloggers make their videos and tell them how good their food is now if a person is finding about any reviews about some uh, restaurant now it is intermixed a person with a good quality of food making and other with a good in, uh, technology or uh, the good with 
technology. He has given the reviews. He, uh, no, we can sit at home and we can find out that which restaurants are good, whose uh, food is better, which foods they are offering. So they are intermixing communities. Now, food department and vlogging department are two very different things, but they have intermixed for the ease of uh, today's generation or today's people who are using technologies, who are using websites or who are social. Okay, what is webinar? Who will tell me about webinar? What is webinar? Online education. Yes, you can also say that webinar included online education. Basically, webinar is to conduct a seminar over the internet. To say or to conduct, it's like online meetings, gathering to discuss and to promote people, services or educational classes. Really good. So it is online education plus online business. You can say you can gather people and you can say whatever you want to say. You can share your experience. You can deliver your lectures. And anything doing in, uh, on internet by gathering people is webinar. Okay. Now, have you understood till now, till the 20 slides? Or do you have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Clear so far. Okay, good. Uh, and what about for those? Do you have understood for those? Or do you have any questions regarding these slides? Okay, good. So here I will end my today's lecture. And um, on next class i will start with impact of it in society so read it about impact of it in society by yourself and i will uh, take an introduction from you plus read the previous slides also i will ask questions and i am teaching you in a way that uh, according to your task your assignments your task number one or your assignment number one will include these slides so understand each and every slide really carefully. And if you have any question, ask me in my next class. Otherwise, I'll, I will ask you. Okay? So go through all the slides. Write down the points that you don't understand. And ask me in the next class. Okay? Thank you so much, class.